While this fountain is running very well, my car still isn't. The engine is at an engine builder, and it won't be until January or February that that's done. In the meantime, the car is sitting, and while I am too, that doesn't mean I'm not doing anything on it. There are many, many different topics that I still can do while the car is not running, and this video is just a hodgepodge of all the different projects that I have been attending on the car. One big is of course preparing all the engine parts and modifying those that I want to modify in order to make my dream engine. But there is a bunch of different other projects which I thought I'd share. So enjoy! I know what's wrong with it. It's a Ford. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. The first modification I want to talk to you about, I actually did last winter when the car was still driving. You see, I put some different reflectors into this thing. The standard aftermarket pieces that you can obtain nowadays are usually chrome-plated and not really parabolic. The new ones you can get for, you know, a couple bucks extra are actually aluminium-plated, perfectly in parabolic shape and are much smoother in its contour. The result of that is a much brighter reflection due to the coating and also a much more focused beam so when you put it against the wall you're really able to focus the light beam you're obviously able to see much more and when you stand in front of it you can lower yourself down and get into the section of light which is actually blindingly bright and then lift yourself up a little bit and you're out of that ray so you truly have a focused beam of light, just like the instructions want them to be. It's a shame I couldn't find any two scenes before and after which were vaguely comparable because the dash cam reacts so sensitively to any changes in outdoor lighting. Nonetheless, there is much more visible light coming through the new reflectors. I had detected a while ago that I actually had a shim between my left rear axle and the drum in order to keep it spaced out nicely. That shim was in quite poor shape but I couldn't do anything about it because I had jammed the drum on there so tightly I couldn't get it back off again. Now however the drum had loosened off once again and look at the shape that the shim is in. On today's episode of how fucked up is fucked up. That's fucked up. 
And that's fucked up. Now, yes, the proper fix would be a new axle. And yes, while the engine is out, why not attend that as well? But to be honest, a new shim right now will do the job just fine. Tighten to 120 Newton meters and then check and recheck after 100 miles, 500 miles and then 1000 miles, then you should be good. I had also discovered one of the fender brackets was broken. Since the headlight bar was already out of the way, taking the bracket out and welding it back up wasn't too big of a job. Now, to me it is immediately obvious that that would be the point of fault at which it would crack, and Ford seems to have seen that problem and also taken care of that. However, why not continue this U-shape all the way through and have it open-ended in the bottom so that there is not all kinds of dirt getting caught and allowing stuff to rot? Right, what else can we do? Well, the horn was always kind of anemic. <laughs> especially when idling the engine or having the stoplights on, it was more like an uh than an ahuga. So I took some measurements and found out that there was a rather high impedance in the horn switch. I cleaned the contacts out as good as I could. didn't change anything so it must be the wire leading from the switch down to the end of the contact and consequently I just bridged the issue using a relay because a new horn rod is darn expensive. Positive side effect, I noticed the horrible horrible job somebody did replacing the old wiring with a new harness and uh, soldering and crimp connecting connectors onto connectors of old wires and whatnot and decided to take out my old soldering iron and fix the issue right. And even if it didn't improve anything, my conscience is clear. While we're talking about electrics, here's something you won't encounter in America. My indicator system wasn't legal. You see, I had one switch for left, one switch for right, and both switches for hazards. And in Germany the law is to have a separate circuit to activate the hazards only. Nein, 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 nein. So I tore everything apart, screwed up a couple of times and frayed the relay and finally then was able to present a new fully legalized indicator system. Well it's looking pretty good and I gotta say, if it worked as good as it looks, then I'd be pretty happy right now. But it does not. There was just some erratic clicking from the relay, then some sizzling, <laughs> and then it stopped. Uh, no lights ever showed up, and uh, it seems like I cooked the relay by wiring something wrong. Found the error mistakenly thought the relay would need a connection to ground. It does not. And now with a fresh relay we should just be able to... With the car prepared in this manner, let's move on to the engine now, shall we? There is some small things like opening up the exhaust flange, replacing the spot wells on my muffler clamp with proper insulation to get rid of the annoying squeak that it had always done, and drilling out some cracks in the flywheel housing. And then there are some big things, starting with the head.
I've got a few imperfections here and there where it didn't clean up all the way. Could I have taken it up? Yes. The thing is, number one, I want to take as little of this thing as ever possible because, you know, in the time that I'll own the car, I might have to do this job multiple times. Um, on the other hand, this is not really critical. There is water in here and water through all these. There is no real pressure on here. So, you know, even if this wall gets a little thinner, who the hell cares? What would be tragic is if there would be some kind of imperfection in this area here, or especially around here, where two cylinders fire against each other. That's the points which are critical, none of this stuff here. Attached to the head is the water pump. I decided to replace the bearings because they didn't sound too great and boy did it put up a fight. First I wrecked the propeller blade while trying to pull it off the shaft. The fan is cast aluminium so there's no welding. Instead I glued and pinned it back in place, then gave it some rigorous testing to see if it would be fit for the job. And then I had to find out the hard way that the sealed bearing which goes in place of the original packing nut isn't actually threaded, only after some intense moments of increased force, that is. More or less by accident I discovered how the whole thing was put together. The shaft is actually two pieces pinned together and by pulling off the impeller you can get access to the split pin. The whole thing must be an early attempt at a leakless water pump because the new packing nut needle bearing doesn't actually fit. Luckily the old one had the dimensions needed to make a bushing and then I could reassemble it in reverse order. The oil pump was also taken apart and rebushed. In doing so, I managed to break one of the mounting ears off. I'm hoping that uh, JB Weld will keep it back together. If not, no harm will be done. <sighs> 
Now I know what y'all are thinking. This is your f***ing oil pump. And gluing a lug to it is just going to result in, well, breakage. And then you have no oil pump. And then your motor is screwed. Well, what does this thing do? It holds this thing in place. Which stays in place perfectly through gravity itself and just needs something to keep it from rotating. One screw would already be enough. Now, what happens if this lug breaks? Well, it's going to fall off and land right here. It's not going to go anywhere else because of this cover and this sieve. No harm done. So, I'm of course going to test this out by just bottoming out a screw in there and see if it's, you know, going to withstand some shenanigans. And if it does, then I'm perfectly fine with it because it's not critical to the function of the oil pump at all. As mentioned before, I did invest in some new parts, like for example the connecting rods, which I decided to weigh out and failed. Alright, I've tried a bunch of different setups and uh, nothing worked out. You see, if you want to measure within a gram, you can't have something which <laughs> the repeatability is, well, nowhere near a gram. And uh, therefore, as much as I wish to have done this, no sorry, not possible. And then we have a counterbalanced crankshaft, which looks beautiful, especially compared to the old beast, which just seems to have the counterweights on the wrong side. Gramm, alter Schwede. And consequently I decided to machine off the weight difference from the flywheel. This will hopefully give me a little bit quicker throttle response paired with better engine braking and then of course it's going to reduce stress on the rear main bearing due to less inertia wobbling about. 
Did I mention the ring gear was chewed up too and had to be swapped? After machining, we had to, of course, balance the thing out. If you only will dream of me, I closed my book the moment I took that first little look at you. So I'll close my eyes to everyone else if you'll open your heart to me. <laughs> Since I was here anyways, I decided to swap out the pilot bearing, which was completely wrecked and might be the reason why I had troubles getting my car into first gear from a standstill. Next I made myself a centering dowel to align the axis of the clutch plate with the axis of the engine. In mounting the pressure plate I discovered that one of the threads was stripped, so I had to make a little doodad to replace the threads here as well. And now that the entire engine seems to be held together with nothing but Loctite and JB Weld, I proceeded to adjust the clutch fingers. And there you have it! All parts of the engine and the car that needed to get some kind of attention, have gotten rebuilt or changed or optimized and uh, now it's back to playing the waiting game until the engine arrives and then hopefully throw everything on, it's going to work first time like a charm. Come on baby, whoa stop with that. And we'll all be happy again. Until then, See you next time and bye bye!